Welcome to the 49th uh, lecture of surface engineering. Um, we have had uh, numerous discussions on various processes leading to change in surface microstructure or composition. Uh, in most of the cases when you change the composition you also end up creating new phase aggregates obviously the microstructure changes. But we have seen also processes uh, for example, um, uh, where we uh, collided the surface with uh, high energy spherical objects and created residual compressive stress without changing composition. Now, uh, today we are going to discuss a very unique process where we are going to change primarily the uh, composition of the surface without having uh, made any major change in the overall phase aggregate or the microstructure. So, we retain exactly if it is silicon, we retain silicon or if it is uh, some tool steel, we exactly have the same phase aggregate, same phase identity. But we do introduce new set of ions or new set of species which go into the solution as solid solution and primarily as substitutional solid solution and the process change uh, either uh, uh, mechanical properties, structural properties or functional properties like conductivity. So, the process is ion implantation and as the name suggests we are talking about uh, implanting or introducing new species ions onto the substrate surface. So, we uh, while we actually try to uh, introduce new species for example, the one here we have to worry about the trajectory that the in incoming ion takes uh, while, in, while in entering into the uh, surface, the range, the projected range unto which it, it actually uh, goes inside and the straggle, the spread that it uh, encounters during the process of uh, entering into the uh, surface. So, either in most of the cases in I would say uh, more often than not, the incoming uh, species, the ion. Uh, will have a definite mass, carry a definite mass with it and of course, the size or the diameter slightly smaller than the uh, corresponding atom, neutral atom. So, it will find its way into this, into the lattice, into the uh, substrate, solid substrate. But uh, within the first uh, few layers, it definitely will encounter either a direct or a glancing incidence uh, uh, impact. So, when it when such a collision takes place either direct or at some angle, uh, the incoming species gets uh, ricocheted, deflected and then after deflect deflection it will actually change its uh, path and eventually will come to rest uh, below a certain depth from the surface. So, this is the usual process of so called multiple collision leading to implantation. But in very rare cases uh, where you have particularly uh, a lattice where the um, interstitial void size is uh, relatively large and more importantly there could be a certain channel which uh, actually offers a certain tunnel or pathway for the ions to penetrate deeper inside uh, depending of course, on the crystal lattice that we are dealing with. In such a case, the ion can actually penetrate much deeper before it actu actually encounters any collision. Now, that kind of a process which actually is called channeling or so called ion channeling is not exactly what is desired when we want to carry out ion implantation because the primary uh, objective is to change the surface composition. So, as the ion moves as during, uh, during its trajectory as I said there would be a typical depth unto which uh, it will uh, enter before it comes to rest after multiple collision events and there could be a spread. So, even if the angle of incidence is directly normal, still there will be a spread let us say up to this angle, uh, there will be a certain spread of uh, the implanted species into different directions. And this typical range is the so called lateral range of uh, uh, movement of the ions. On the other hand, there could be also a range in which an incident ion will actually undergo multiple collision and spread over a region and that is typically called the delta R p or the straggle. We will co we'll come to that in a minute. So, the whole process essentially uh, the total ion implantation process uh, 
we will have certain uh, elementary steps or the important steps. First is ionization of the species that we want to implant. Then acceleration of the species as we introduce the species into the chamber, we uh, need to accelerate it uh, to a very high uh, velocity by application of very high electric field of the order of few kVs to MeVs. And then finally, the ejection, injection or implantation onto the surface and which can be typically a few tens to few hundreds of nanometers, but certainly not more than a micrometer. So, way less than a micrometer. So, that these are the three important steps of ionization, acceleration and injection or implantation. So, what are the elements or what are the species that we want to implant? So, if it is a semiconductor, then you would naturally think of elements with a, uh, which basically belong to group 3 or group 2 um, if you want to create a p type or group 5 or 6 elements if you want to make an n type semiconducting uh, region. So, accordingly you will choose elements from phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, indium or uh, boron or, or various other uh, typical species. So, and uh, by the by the, the biggest and the most uh, I would say um, widely applied application of uh, an implantation is in the semiconductor industry. So, where this is purely because uh, the precision and the accuracy with which you actually are able to uh, carry out uh, compositional change and hence uh, change in electrical property. So, we are talking about uh, implantation dose that is the concentration typically about 10 raised to 11 to 10 raised to 18 uh, species number of species per centimeter square. So, so in a very small region you actually can uh, significantly alter the composition. So, the energy uh, with which the ions actually are accelerated would be anything like few hundred kVs. Um, so, up to about you require the implanted implanted to have a capacity of about 1 MeV uh, maximum capacity, but typically you use about few tens of uh, kVs to about few hundred kVs. The, as I was mentioning the precision is extremely good. So, you actually can um, create a region with the compositional uh, reproducibility within less than 1 percent, maybe much less than 1 percent. So, essentially we can dope anything from a p parts per billion to parts per million and maybe uh, a few uh, fractions of uh, atomic percentages. The beauty of the process is that this is not a thermally activated process. It is completely at room temperature. The whatever diffusion or mass transport takes place is essentially through ballistic diffusion, which means uh, mechanically or uh, uh, species movement purely because of uh, force uh, applied from outside. So, it is not thermally activated process and the ion flux that is used to actually uh, obtain such high dose would be something like 10 raised to 12 to 14 centimeter square per second. So, you actually are uh, injecting very high uh, focus beam, high uh, concentration of ions in a focus region. Uh, so, in these uh, conditions uh, or this process the two important factors is the dose the number of electron number of atoms or ions per centimeter square and the concentration the total number of atoms per centimeter cube the overall compositional index. So, the typically the dose would be uh, the integration of uh, the particular species concentration of that over a period of time. So, if this is the uh, surface in which you are implanting and this is the distance obviously, the, the typical profile would look like this. So, typically this is the depth you are talking about, but you integrate over the entire uh, thickness of the material and the total value that you integrate gives you the total dosage that you can achieve, which is uh, at best would be somewhere in this range. So, step wise as I said you need to uh, first uh, carry out ionization you need to accelerate the ions at uh, applying very high voltage. Uh, so, that the ions actually carry sufficient kinetic energy and momentum to be implanted. Then you also need certain projection you need uh, a very well calculated change in trajectory and then finally, focus on to the specific spot where you want to implant. Uh, after implantation there will be multiple collision events uh, because of which the ions will uh, 
progressively lose their kinetic energy and then eventually will come to a standstill. And so, the loss of energy happens because of collisions and some of these could be direct, but mostly these are glancing angle collisions and then eventually the uh, atom, the ion basically acquires electrons and becomes a neutral atom and comes to a stop, uh, comes to a rest. So, these are the uh, elementary steps in, uh, involved in the overall process of implantation. Uh, there is one important thing that we uh, actually must realize that we are talking about essentially uh, uh, a process which is uh, purely uh, line of sight, which means if I am if this is my substrate, substrate and if this is the ion beam is if this is where the ion beam is implanted. So, we are actually catering only to this region and not here or here. So, purely the process is confined to the region which it is seeing. So, it is a line of sight process. So, we need a high voltage accelerator because otherwise the ions will not acquire sufficient kinetic energy and momentum to be able to enter into the solid substrate. So, it is like you are in the area of the substrate may be small, but eventually uh, compared to the size of an individual ion it is almost infinite, but to be able to penetrate you have metallic or uh, ionic or partially ionic bond onto the surface and you need to penetrate that. So, that means you have to make your way through already a rigid body. So, you require a lot of energy and momentum to carry with you. I already mentioned that we generally for semiconductors you go for elements which are either group 3 or group 5 or maybe group 2 or group 6 kind of elements, but the precursor is a gas so that you can easily ionize. Uh, say for example, here the intended species is arsenic, here it is phosphorus, here it is boron. So, you take various kinds of hydrides which are uh, high vapor pressure easily uh, can be taken into vapor state and then you ionize them by using certain electrical field and you also need a mass spectrometer which actually will select and screen. So, basically what, uh, what species you want you exactly select that one and the remaining ones you can screen using a certain magnetic field. Um, so, you screen the ions of interest and also this allows uh, maintaining a very high purity. So, this is another landmark thing apart from being a line of sight, um, this is also very uh, important for us to remember that this is extremely uh, uh, accurate. And precise. We also um, can maintain extremely high purity. So, in fact, this is possibly the purest form of uh, altering the surface composition. So we need as I said a high voltage accelerator typically maximum about 1 million volt uh, accelerator, but usually we apply uh, anything like 300 to 500 kilo uh, volt. Uh, we also need a scanning system which essentially will allow the beam to be deflected in the x or y direction and this deflection will make sure that you are essentially implanting precisely at this spot and certainly not anywhere here or here. So, in order to maintain this very high precision you probably will need certain deflection or adjustment of the uh, uh, path of flight either along x direction or along z direction. So, you need deflectors to do that we will we'll see that soon. So, the overall uh, implantation system will have certain essential components as I was saying. So, first of course, is the ion source. So, here is the ion source and few tens of kilo volts will allow this va vapor the gas to be vaporized and then subsequently ionized. Then you extract the ions and then you make it bend almost 90 degree. You bend such a way so that the neutrals are not uh, uh, needed anymore and uh, when you accelerate you actually accelerate and make them converge at a very small focal point and that is exactly when you energize the maximum you accelerate the most. 
So, you apply higher voltage, higher negative voltage, so that they, uh, you accelerate the ions and then you have a focal uh, plane and from there you again converge and during the path of convergence you actually also bend again. This bending is intended to only extract or collect the ions with uh, which, which, are, which are cations which carry certain electrical charge. So, then only you can uh, actually bend them or deviate from their usual path and the neutrals will continue to go in this direction. So, I do not want the neutrals. So, these are used as a beam trap by which you can trap the neutrals and the ions continue to move in uh, in another path and then finally, you focus on to the substrate. So, this is your substrate in which you actually allow the implantation to happen. So, before you actually as I was saying uh, uh, in terms of the precision, I can move the beam uh, in, in two possible directions either along y direction or along x direction and that is how I can make it implant or uh, fall exactly on the precise point where I want. So, in terms of a silicon, now typically the depth as I said is a uh, uh, few tens of a nanometer maybe 100, uh, 200 nanometer, but the spread on the surface will be very, very precise. Um, so, you are talking about submicron features or feature length or width could be maybe 10 or 20 nanometer and you can very well confine within those regions by use of these kind of deflectors. Another very important point is that the distribution of the species is Gaussian. So, the peak concentration is not at the surface, but below the surface. So, the implantation energy has to be calculated such a way that we, uh, there are two as aspects that while implanting you also create defects. So, you do not want defect density to cross a certain allowable limit, but on the other hand you also um, unless you have sufficient energy you will not be able to penetrate up to a certain depth. So, you have to find the right choice and in most of the cases uh, the wafer or the metallic substrate or a ceramic substrate on which you are implanting is not exactly 90 degree to the beam, but maybe a few degree um, inclined to the incoming beam from it from the normal incidence. This is just to make sure that there is no ion channeling, the ions do not move through and through, the ions immediately encounter certain uh, barrier um, sitting at this very first surface or within the first few surfaces and then encounter certain collision and once a single collision happens then there will be multiple collision events, because it is just like the carom board when you actually uh, hit the striker or a billiard board when you um, hit the main um, uh, billiard ball then it hits and then ricochets into multiple collisions. So, that kind of uh, implantation um, process uh, allows uh, uh, implantation of the species to be concentrated uh, and to reach a maximum concentration not at the surface, but below the surface somewhere here. So, so, the design uh, of the process has to be done properly, so that um, we know exactly what would be the concentration of the species below the surface. Now, this is the typical straggle that uh, uh, we, I, I mentioned at the very beginning. So, it is like just like the root of a tree. Uh, we know very well that below the stem the root does not necessarily follow the same vertical direction, but it spreads up to a certain distance. So, if, if this is where the ion is uh, entering, uh, if the ions are entering from this spot, so there will be a range up to which they will spread out and this is this happens purely because of this multiple uh, collision events or so called cascading effect and, and, and then uh, the concentration of the ions will be confined typically in this region. So, this is the delta R p this is the so called delta R p and this is R p, this is the projected range. Now, um, injection to collision leading to eventual uh, coming to uh, losing all the kinetic energy and coming to a standstill. So, during the increasing uh, process of increasingly higher amount of reduction of energy, this 
creates a complex distribution of ions. So, most of these are uh, not uh, possible to be predicted. The depth of course, one can predict depending upon the surface condition and the applied uh, voltage or acceleration voltage, but exactly uh, what would be the path taken by the ions. There are multiple uh, modeling exercises available reported in the literature which deal with it because that is very crucial. What is the lateral uh, diffusion or lateral spread of the ions? Uh, say for example, if you are trying to create a, a certain um, uh, change in electrical properties of the semiconductor, you cannot afford to make it uh, spread too thin along the lateral direction. Then you change the, then there will be leakage current and there will be overall uh, deterioration of the of the performance. So, the implantation system uh, we already have seen will have this anode which will create this ions. So, this is the ionization chamber and then this is the opening through which the ions are uh, ions enter or are extracted into the chamber and then as I said they are bent almost 90 degree uh, using a certain magnet uh, uh, that we have here and then uh, we accelerate them by several hundred keVs and then we use this x and y uh, direction deflections or deflectors by electrostatic uh, uh, mechanism and then allow them to get implanted. So, in this the number of ions that we eventually are uh, collecting in, into the substrate surface can be predicted or calculated uh, or the so called implanted dose can be calculated indirectly using the or measuring the beam current. And uh, we already I already mentioned that there will be multiple implants. In fact, you can actually change the species that you are implanting. So, it is not necessary that when you are implanting boron or phosphorus it has to be always like that. If you change the source then of course, you can make a certain amount of um, changes in the composition. So, that is called ion mixing actually you can add multiple ions onto the same implanted region and then make an alloyed region. The lateral scattering effects uh, they are always smaller than the lateral diffusion. In other words uh, what one calculates either as um, thermally activated or ballistic diffusion wise the di distance to which the ions are supposed to spread would be um, slightly higher than the so called scattering effects that you. So, the struggle that we saw would be smaller than the uh, lateral diffusion distance maximum distance that one can uh, see. Another very important thing is that when we implant species onto the uh, substrate there will be a huge amount of crystalline damages created primarily the point effects. So, implantation will definitely create very high concentration of point defects, vacancies, self interstitials, even in case of semiconducting materials or ionic materials some short key or uh, Frenkel disorders and so on. So, first thing is that we do not want direct normal incidence. So, we always allow certain angle of incidence uh, with respect to the normal incidence. So, that there is multiple um, collision events, cascading events leading to uh, higher concentration being confined to the surface concentration of ions, but while we enforce that we also uh, encounter certain amount of uh, defects created by this process of implantation. So, obviously, if you have a billiard ball here and if this billiard ball is hit by another ball of same size or bigger size obviously, this will get deflected. So, when it gets deflected it can leave behind a vacancy or it and in the process it can also push it into a position which is not necessarily a typical lattice position, but can be a self interstitial position. So, as a result these defects are created um, I mean there is no escape from that. So, what does one do I mean if you create a large concentration of defects then obviously, in the subsequent uh, use uh, there could be uh, defect uh, induced diffusion and change in properties. In the extreme case, if you have a lattice, let us say if I have a lattice where I have obviously a three dimensional periodicity. Now, if uh, the if the implantation events are so violent that this fellow goes here, that fellow goes there and this goes here and you have a vacancy here, 
you create a vacancy here. So, in the process, in case of a typical crystal lattice, you would expect atoms or ions at regular intervals, right? And that is the so called long range periodicity. But if this fellow is missing here and this fellow is displaced somewhere here, this is de deflected somewhere here, then along a certain distance, maybe along x or y or along z, if you do not see atoms or ions at regular intervals, then you question whether you still have a, a, a species, whether you are still dealing with a, with a crystalline mass at all. So, in such a situation, you actually can convert a crystalline matrix into an amorphous matrix, a matrix which does not have long range periodicity. Now, obviously, the depth you are talking about, depth of uh, penetration is a uh, few tens, maybe 100 nanometer, 200 nanometer. So, it is not the bulk that you are changing, but the surface you can create so much damage that the surface can get completely amorphized or completely lose long range periodicity. That is purely because of the defect density that you create in the process of implantation. So, in order to anneal out those defects, many of these uh, semiconducting devices wafers actually are subjected to certain post implantation annealing, thermally activated annealing process, whereby the atoms will come back to their respective crystalline positions. That means, you will restore crystallinity and that also will um, improve uh, uh, the conductivity and ensure uh, structural stability in future. So, the implanter uh, actually will have uh, um, certain um, you know configuration. Uh, this we have discussed, so nothing new about it. You have ion source, you have pump, you have the analyzing magnet, the spectrometer, then you select and then you implant onto the species after this course correction, path correction. And the neutral trap I have already said is to arrest the neutral ions. So, typical sources uh, say for uh, arsenic implantation you will use arsen, for phosphorus implantation you will use a phosphine. So, these are hydride gases, riboren and so on. Um, energy as I said, this is the maximum the few levels of MEVs, but that is really used. Um, x and y deflections are needed. That is the uh, more elaborate uh, uh, view uh, of the overall um, uh, implanter system. So, ionization, extraction into the acceleration tube, beam uh, deflection through this uh, mass spectrometer magnet. Um, one other thing I should mention is that the use of the need of vacuum. You are talking about typically something like 10 raised to uh, anywhere between 10 raised to 9 to 10 raised to 11 tor. So, very high vacuum level and that is needed because if you have certain concentration of gaseous species, the ions will collide with them and lose energy way before they are able to implant onto the surface. So, that means, you are actually wasting the acceleration that you are uh, spending so much time and effort to uh, create uh, high velocity and momentum of the ions. So, you need absolutely extremely high vacuum, extremely high vacuum. The target chamber obviously has to be at the highest level of vacuum and before they enter there is an isolation valve which makes sure that the, uh, the, the region here is completely devoid of any undesirable gaseous atoms. So, you need actually sc certain scanning over the surface, certain rastering over the surface and there are different patterns possible which will allow you to raster and then uh, integrate over a certain surface area. So, typically uh, this is the kind of uh, time scale that per uh, wafer that you implant because too high an exposure will create not only very high damage, but also can create local temperature rise. Um, the typical beam current will be in, in this order a few milli amperes and from which one can calculate what is the concentration of ions onto the surface. Um, this is the frequency at which you actually do the implantation and also surface integration. So, what all we have uh, uh, discussed in this part of an implantation, we will follow up in the next lecture also certain other features. So, this is a process which compared to any other diffusion control process is completely uh, 
uh, driven process without any um, without any help or influence of thermal thermal effect so this is purely ballistic diffusion that we are talking about the components as i said would be an ionization chamber extraction chamber acceleration chamber then deflector using magnetic field magnet, mag, very high power magnets um, then acceleration also will require certain uh, beam trap the um, neutral trap and then you have x and y deflectors and finally high vacuum chamber where implantation is carried out you also may need certain manipulation of the sub, the substrate the wafer or maybe a metallic system in x and y directions to cover a wider area the spot or the focus is very very small so it, and that, that too this being a highly line of sight process one of the biggest limitation would be that in an implantation you cannot think of covering leave alone meter by meter but not even a centimeter by centimeter area so you essentially you make a very tiny little spot of implantation you require very high voltage to accelerate and give sufficient kinetic energy you need very high vacuum because without which there will be a lot of species gaseous species inside and collision leading to deceleration of the ions um, it's a line of sight process we have seen that it actually uh, implants only where it is seen where it is focused uh, we need a mass spectrometer because with the help of the strong magnets we actually can focus and extract or uh, remove the undesirable elements um, the atoms are bigger than ions so obviously you would prefer to use an ion for implantation than an atom otherwise there will be much of more of damage at the surface than implantation uh, so we have uh, possible applications for metallic systems say for example tools or uh, prosthetic implants or very specific um, uh, surgical instruments um, for example a hard valve where you want a certain um, anti corrosive or biocompatible properties to be imparted within uh, up to about a few tens of a nanometer maybe 20 nanometer or less and for an area which is very very small maybe a few micrometers uh, in diameter or something so that's the that those kind of sophisticated and very precise applications for which ion implantation is ideal for semiconductor industry all the species all the devices and so on are routinely uh, used for changing their chemistry and hence the conducting properties so with this we'll stop here now and then we'll move on to the next part of ion implantation in the next lecture thank you